Hi, welcome to Something to Talk About, uh, and it, this is my Song of Ice and Fire lore series. I normally cover one character in my Song of Ice and Fire lore series, but today I want to talk about Ten Fools. I'm I'm working my way through the books for the billionth time, <laughs> and um, the more uh, I do, the more I, I look at the fool characters, and they're kind of in the background and stuff, and, and a lot of them are very prominent characters, so it's like, why don't I do a top 10 fools? So that's what I'm doing. If you've never been here before, click like, subscribe, how's it going? What's up? I um, film these all in one big take. I do not do any editing, mostly because I'm lazy, but also I like my feel, my my talking at you feel, my um, improv kind of. I also have my cards that I read off of. Simply read the cards. They're going to be wonderful, really. And um, so I don't lose track completely because I'm already going on a tangent. So welcome if this is your first time and welcome back if it isn't. And yeah, let's talk about 10 Fools. So. I'm using fools as in jesters, you know, court jesters, people who are, you know, um, brought into courts who are almost always a low bar, not always, but mostly, and they're there to entertain, right? So fools is the word that George usually uses. I don't, I'm trying not to, I don't know if it's a mean word, because I know if you call somebody a fool or if you pity a fool, um, that's usually an insult, but I don't think these guys considered an insult. I think it was like their job title. Weird world they lived in. So let's start off. Uh, the way I, a lot of it was just my opinion and how how much these guys meant to me um, and how interesting they are. So a lot of it is, are they involved in any way of the main stories and are they actually integral to um, the stories? Also, I'm going from everywhere in the lore. So Fire and Blood all the way up. Um, there's a lot of fools that were just like the fool at this court. Well, he didn't even have a name, so they're not going to make the list. Um, and some people who made the list don't have any art for them, <laughs> but yeah. All right. Well, let's move. Let's get going. Right. So, uh, I mean, I've already talked for two and a half minutes. So uh, let's get to my number 10 is Tom Turnup. Who's that? Tom Turnip was a royal jester and the fool at the Red Keep during the late reign of old King Jaehaerys, the old king. Their daughter, Princess Sarah Targaryen, who often played cruel pranks on Tom. I don't know why I added the who in there for, but uh, such as getting him uh, to perform naked, sitting on the Iron Throne, which is a no-no, and some unspeakable acts at a brothel. I kind of cut that all down, right? There's a huge plot of what happened at a brothel. This is all in Fire and Blood, the lore video. It's really good. Um, so essentially, the Princess Sarah, who's also a really big character, um, and her plot has Tom turn up where she kind of plays him and uses him and manipulates him and messes with him to show that people are kind of just objects to her, especially lowborns like Tom Turnup. Um, what can I say? It's a tense spot. Uh, he isn't too special, right? I didn't even really say anything about him. Uh, we don't really know what his shtick is. We don't know really why he's called Tom Turnup. Maybe he ate turnips, but uh, maybe it does say that, but uh, it's, Mostly what he's known for is for what Sarah did with him and at that, like, manipulating and messing things up. So that's why he's only at 10th, because it's not really for something he did. You know what I'm saying? Um, but he is involved with the downfall of Sarah, which is one of the most important events in the Old King's life. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. All right. It was number 10. So good old Tom turn up. Let's move to number nine with the best name, Butterbumps. Man, uh, if that nickname wasn't already taken, I want it. I like butter bumps. I'm kind of chubby like butter bumps, uh, although I think he was called enormously fat. I wouldn't go that far. I'm just chubby. Um, but immensely, there you go. Who? Butter bumps is immensely fat. He owns a jester suit of green and yellow feathers with floppy coxcomb. Despite his size, he's capable of tumbling, juggling, singing, sleight of hand, and he is also he also can fart at will. Another thing I can do. What's up? <laughs> Why? 
He farts at will. That's pretty awesome. No, I I had more than that. I just thought it'd be funny if I wrote that on the card. He plays a role, and this isn't the only fool on this list, in it, um, Sansa storyline. So when she goes to in um, Storm of Swords, when the Tyrells call her over and uh, the Queen of Thorns talks to her and is trying to get out dirt on Joffrey, like, hey, how is Joffrey? She's afraid to talk. So they make butter bumps kind of like sing really loud. He sings Bear in the Maiden Fair and he like jumps around and everyone's paying attention to butter bumps so she can be like, hey, Joffrey's actually a complete piece of garbage. Don't do, go, don't go near him. Um, so that's why I like butter bumps. So, and also I like the idea of a big, big, immensely fat dude. Um, still, that doesn't mean that he's, you know, he can still tumble and jump around. He's very mobile, right? I mean, I I like that. Uh, so, yeah, that's Butter Bumps, number nine. This one, a lot of people are going to be like, really? This far low? Yeah, I don't really, there's not too much for him. He's probably the, one of the most famous fools in the a Song of Ice and Fire. But I don't really know much about his character. So let's talk about Moon Boy at number eight. The crowd goes wild. Who? Moon Boy is a pie-faced, and he wears motley clothing, uh, common to fools. He has big, round eyes, and carries a rattle. <laughs> Moon Boy is considered a simpleton, though Sansa Stark and fellow fool Dantos, you might see him later, suspect him of not being as simple as he seems. After Sir Jamie Lannister confesses to Tyrion that Tysha was a never, in fact, a not saying that word, a lady of the night, um, Tyrion becomes furi furious and tells Jamie that their sister Cersei has been having sex with their cousin, uh, Lancel Lannister and Sir Osmond Kettleblack. And uh, Tyrion sarcastically adds, and probably Moon Boy, for all I know. Uh, this haunts Jamie, who uh, even has dreams about Cersei and Moon Boy. Okay, lots to unpack there. So there's this huge conversation that happens between Jamie and um, Tyrion. That's probably the most important conversation to uh, both of them. And it happens at the end of Storm. And they left it out. Because, of course, if it's one of the most important things to happen to two separate characters, of course, they left it out in the TV show. All right, not doing that. Um, so when uh, Jamie confesses to uh, Tyrion that he lied about Tysha, Tyrion's first wife. He is feeling very spiteful towards Jamie, and then he's like, well, Cersei's banging everybody. And then he throws in Moon Boy as like, oh, it's probably even Moon Boy. It's so much people, it's probably even Moon Boy. And it, that really gets to Jamie. So he constantly says, she's blah, blah, with Lancel and probably even Moon Boy. And it's constantly in his head. Uh, so yeah, uh, why? Uh, though he is around a lot, he isn't too interesting. <laughs> I like that he's a source of Jamie's hate. That's kind of funny. But really, besides being a royal court jester, there isn't really too much. Maybe some weird moon, Azura high dragon moon symbolism. Yeah, I just said a bunch of weird stuff there. So um, if you guys know, um, David Lightbringer used to be Lucifer Means Lightbringer on YouTube. He has a bunch of Azura high uh, Church of Starry Wisdom stuff. And... Um, he goes really, really, really deep into that. And a lot of it is the moon bursting. Uh, maybe Azura High um, caused the moon to erupt and then bring dragons forth. There's a lot, and I don't want to get into it. But whenever moons are brought up, David Lightbringer goes, oh, maybe he's connected to Azura High. So maybe there's some weird moon boy stuff with that. Probably not. Um, I love David Lightbringer, but, you know, maybe not. Um, and... Uh, uh, <laughs> that was a lot. All right. Um, and oh yeah, that it's kind of my point is besides being a source of Jamie's hate, he doesn't really do anything. He's kind of just like the fool. Um, so yeah, that's why he's only at eight, man. We got a lot left guys. We're already at 10 minutes. The good wife for number seven, who the good wife is a fat man who dressed as a woman and said vulgar, shocking things with his wooden children. Uh, a pair of carved puppets. 
The uh, Good Wife is among many artists brought to the Red Keep by Queen Alisane, good Queen Alisane, uh, Targaryen after her husband, Old King, to begin his new rule. Maybe when he wasn't old yet? Um, <laughs> why? He's a royal fool like Moonboy, but at least he has a better shtick. And yeah, the Good Wife kind of has a better shtick. He dresses up uh, like this old lady, and he's got a bunch of kids that are puppets, and they go, bah, 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 and they talk and say vulgar things. He's like an old ventriloquist and he's dresses as a lady so you know like he's got he's got a lot more to a shtick all he is is a is a is a court jester just like moon boy they're not really involved in too much but at least good wife who doesn't even have a picture of him has a better shtick than moon boy sorry moon boy you're still number eight and yeah i like good wife funny all right, now we're going to get to a, ooh, a little rough one here. Jingle Bell. Oof. Who? Egan Frey, called Jingle Bell, is a lackwit son of Sir Stevran Frey and Jane Lydon, and the uh, fool of the twins. Aegon is about 50. He's thin and stooped. <laughs> All right. Uh, he has long gray hair, and he strong resembles his grandfather, Lord Walder Frey, but has longer and f larger and friendlier eyes. He is killed at the Red Wedding by Catelyn Stark. Yeah. Moonboy, or uh, I mean, uh, Moonboy. Get up. Stop talking about Moonboy. Um, Jingle Bell was uh, not in the show, but how Catelyn holds um, his like young wife hostage, Walter Frey's young wife hostage, in uh, the Red Wedding in the show that's not a that's not what happened she actually holds his grandson jingle bell hostage and then when she's like i'll kill your grandson he's like whatever you know how many grandsons i got and plus that one just he's a lackwit so yeah uh why for his role in the red wedding and his extremely sad role in the red wedding and at the uh, mental downfall of cat turning the stone heart so uh, there is a big thing about um how the last thing that Catelyn did was get vengeance because her brother, or brother, her son, Rob Stark, died. Spoilers. And that's why she then gets vengeance killing Jingle Bell right before she died. So then when she comes back as Stoneheart, um, that's why she's just tied into vengeance so much, right? Because her last act was this violent act of vengeance. So yeah. When it comes to being a fool, he doesn't have too much going for him. But storyline-wise, he has a lot going for him uh, for just being involved in one of the most important moments in the entire uh, series. And also this really, really sad act that Catelyn turns um, somebody who's, I always said, don't do blood for blood. They didn't. She didn't want people to kill Jamie or anything like that. Like, oh, that won't bring in my daughters back. Like, no, I have to give up. Like, she's never been going for wrath and vengeance. You know, that's what she yelled at um, Lord Carlstark, Carlstark for, who wanted Jamie's blood. That won't bring your, your sons back. And then after her son died, she's like, I'm killing one of your family. Like, I have to now. So, yeah. Poor Jingle Bell. This is a, this is a sad character. F's in the chat. All right, let's get to something a little more um, fun and a little more legendary with number five, Florian the Fool. Who? Florian the Fool is a legendary hero in the Riverlands from the Age of Heroes. He is known for falling in love with a maiden named John Quill. Florian was a great fool and a great knight. He is described in Tales of the, uh, of the First Men as a knight. Uh, though uh, knights were not a thing yet. <laughs> so why is he a great knight before knights? All right. According to legend, Florian was homely and wore a suit of iron motley. That's what this picture is. It's actually really awesome. He was uh, not of a notable birth. Florian first spy John Quill and her sisters bathing in the pool that is located in Maiden Pool. That's actually how it got its name, Maiden Pool. Why? He is a uh, literal legendary hero. <laughs> Duh. And also the symbolism between him and John Quill and Sansa and Dantos is super important for Sansa's story. Um, and uh, her learning uh, uh, that those stars and heroes are just fantasy. So, yeah. Um, 
comparing the Flory and the Fool situation with her situation with Dantos is her learning that life isn't the way it is in the songs, right? And that's like the first couple books, like her whole thing is in the first book, she's like, oh, be like the songs. Oh, gonna court's gonna be so great. Oh, blah, 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 blah. And then she learns that her Prince Charming is actually a monster. And she learns that courts is just full of liars and lickspittles and people who will um, betray you at any moment. And she learns that, well, the, your fool isn't Florian. He's freaking Dantos. Like, so Florian the Fool, that whole story is there too really it, it's it's all that symbolism of the, that juxtaposition of um the way it is in the songs compared to what sansa's life really is and that's why that story is really important and also look he's he's wearing iron motley that's <laughs> nuts all right we're moving forward and yeah we're i mean i just talked about him right so let's just talk about him some more Number four is Dantos, Sir Dantos Hollard, once called Dantos the Red, now just called Dantos the Fool, is a knight and the last surviving member of House Hollard. Uh, Dantos is a fat dude with pale, skinny legs. He has blotchy skin and a nose full of broken veins. Gross. Uh, Dantos is usually drunk and his wine can make him weepy. He's always crying. Um, he showed up wasted to Joffrey's name day tourney. Joff, taking this as a personal insult, commands that Dantos is put to death via drowning in a casket of wine. However, the pleading of Sansa saves his life, and Dantos is stripped of his knighthood and made a fool, joining Moonboy. So he's one of them right next to Moonboy. Dantos is... Uh, Dantos, now a fool, does what he can to help Sansa as thanks and is involved in her escape from King's Landing. Why? Why do I have him at number four? He's kind of a creepy dude and a slob, dr creepy drunk slob and barely passable as even a fool, but is a huge part in Sansa's storyline is and his connection to Florian uh, earned him that spot. Everything I just said for Florian, Dantos is all tied into that, right? He's her Florian, and she calls him her Florian, and he calls her my John Quill because he's like this oaf. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's why Dantos has made it this far. Like I said, the character himself, <laughs> he's fine, but it's his connection to Sansa's whole story arc. All right, we're done talking about Sansa, believe it or not. The rest of these guys have nothing to do with Sansa. So much in the first one, uh, first couple. Um, well, not really. The last two. Whatever. The next one, I actually did do a uh, a Song of Ice and Fire lore video for. So I have covered him um, on his own. So if you want to go watch that, go watch that. But my number three is Shagwell the Fool. Oh, man, what a vicious monster. So, yeah, go check out my video if you don't know enough about Shagwell or if you want, if you've read the books and you want a little little more. So, uh, Shagwell is also called Shagwell the Fool and Shags. He's a psychotic gesture and a member of uh, the Juggalo Nation and the Brave Companions <laughs> Mercenary Company. <laughs> uh, Shagwell is a wispy fool who laughs in a high shrill uh, and brang. Um, a high and shrill and braying laugh. Um, the cell sword is a monster who tells cruel jokes and he's said to be half mad. Shagwell wears a green and pink or a gray and pink motley. He is a nimble and fights with a triple morning star, really a, a flail with three spiked balls um, chained to a wooden haft. Uh, he is involved with Arya's time at Harrenhal, along with Jamie's time there, and eventually is killed by Brienne at the Whispers. Um, why? He's the Joker of a Westeros. I love this psycho mad clown. He is a. Um, I like this clown so uh, so much. I made a dedicated video. He already said that. He shows the horrible and violent side to being a fool. Yeah, he's the cell sword nasty monster human being, but he dresses as a fool. He's terrifying. And um, yeah, oh, Shagwell. Number three, because again, he's tied into so many people's characters. Um, I like Arya's, Jamie's, and then Brienne killing him. Um, yeah. And also tied in with Dantos too, because when 
when Brienne is looking for um, uh, Sansa, she's saying he went with a fool. So then she just started looking for a fool, which she was looking for Dantos, but then finds Shagwa. All right. Next to, I mean, I'm sure you guys know that one of these guys was going to be my number one. Both of them could have been my number one. I like both of these guys a lot, but I had to put them somewhere and everyone's going to be like, oh, is he not your number one? But all the way from Fire and Blood, we got Mushroom. He didn't make it into <laughs> a Fire and Blood or a House of Dragon as much as he should. I guess he's in the background somewhere, but Mushroom's a character, yo. Who? Mushroom was a dwarf who served as a fool at the courts of uh, uh, Viserys I, Aegon II, Rhaenyra Targaryen, and Aegon III Targaryen. He is allegedly um, he he allegedly recorded the events occurred during his time at the courts in his testimony of Mushroom, written by an unknown scribe, filled with tales of plots, murders, affairs, debaucheries, and many other serious claims. Uh, many of the wild claims of Mushroom, according to uh, um, Gildane, loved, um, who, according to Gildane, loved Renera greatly, are disputed by the account of Eustace and uh, a Aegon the Second um, supporter. So, what? <laughs> All right. Um. So, the books, uh, Fire and Blood, is all written from a maester's point of view, but he didn't have, like, really good account of um, the Dance of Dragons. So what we're getting from Fire and Blood, or House of Dragons, ugh, House of Dragons, the Dance of the Dragons, right? And um, Mushroom wrote throughout all those times, but they didn't have one, like, the maester didn't have one maester's account of the Dance of Dragons. He had three peoples, and uh, Mushroom was one of them. So, like, he had one who was a septum, one who was a maester, and one who was mushroom. So, mushrooms is always, like, the more scandalous and ugh, ugh, sexy virgin. Um, but also, his was always the more Renera, um, like, favored virgin of it. Um, all right. Why? Sally left that out. So, Dragon, he is a major part in the Fire and Blood lore book. He is a, one of the three characters in Formless and Dance of Dragon. Did I mention he is super vulgar and super funny dude? I love Mushroom. Uh, but he's not number one. He's number two, though. He's great. I love him. Uh, but I had to do this guy for number one. I had to. And it is Patch Face. Whoa, here we go, guys. Patchface, nicknamed Patches, is Lord Stannis Baratheon's court fool and jester of Dragonstone. His face is tattooed in a motley, earning his name. He was a jester slave in um, Volantis. He was clever and skilled boy with astonishing wit. His uh, freedom was bought by Stefan Baratheon, who was impressed um, with the boy during his trip to the Free Cities. So Stefan Baratheon was Robert Baratheon, Robert Stannis, and Renly's dad. Whew. Um, after Stefan's ship was caught in a storm, Patchface drowned. That's how Stefan died, and um, Robert and everybody watch it happen. So I, I had to condense a lot of this. So Stefan was going to bring back Patchface from the Free Cities because he wanted to teach Stannis how to laugh. Yep. All right. Uh, <laughs> so... Big ship or big storm hit. Uh, everybody drowned. Um, drowned and so he drowned. Patch face, pa patch face drowned and washed up three days later with the rest of the dead. And then he sat up and coughed up water. After that, he acted very different. He was deemed a half wit due to the fact that he only spoke in riddles and sounds. Why? It had to be patch face. He's mysterious, creepy, full of prophecies. His friendship with uh, Shireen is equal part sweet and terrifying. His prophecies are usually spot on, the ones that we can decipher anyways. Um, but he always, uh, he has, uh, but he really has a Lovecraft feel. And I can't wait to see where his story ends. Yeah, I think he's going to be a huge major part in the next book, especially with what's going up in the wall. There's a lot of depth symbolism and um, he's constantly... Yeah, he's talking about he's yeah. There's a lot of patch face videos. Go watch them. All right, I'm I I do not have the time to unwrap patch face right here. Um, nor do I have the intellect. Go talk to a smarter YouTuber. Um, but 
Yeah, Alt Swift X made a or Alt Shift X, not Swift. Alt Shift X made a really good patch face video a long, long, long time ago. That's really good. But yeah, his prophecies, he prophesies Red Wedding in the beginning of the book that it happened. He says a lot of stuff like the dead in the water, the dead rise up and, you know, like crazy weird stuff. And he's a crazy weird character. And I do think that he's going to be part of a really really evil thing later on <clears throat> and that's why i like patch face <laughs> so uh, there you guys go uh 25 minutes oh yeah of course it had to be 25 minutes thanks for watching if you watch this whole thing remember this is just my opinion this is just me you know if you have mushroom at number one if you have florian at number one if you have butter bumps uh if you love the fact you can fart <laughs> all right let me know your favorite fools in the comments. Thanks for watching. Check out the rest of my song about some fire stuff. And um, yeah, stay away from weddings in Westeros. Have a good one, guys. Peace.